Now the first thing we do is take off our glasses, remember? Yes. Right. <laughs> it's Sunday morning on CBS. But before our beloved host, Charles Osgood, greets the millions of you out there, he spends time with this woman, yeah. makeup artist Ricky Johnson. Yeah. Ricky's sort of the last person you're chatting with before you go on air? Yes, and we're chatting about any number of things. For over 20 years, our beloved Ricky has been making up Charlie. <laughs> I'm guessing your rapport relaxes you with her? Absolutely. But Ricky's career with CBS long predates Sunday morning. Okay, all set. Among the other titans she's touched up? I'm Morley Safer. I'm Ed Bradley. I'm Harry Reasoner. This is Walter Cronkite. Good night. And that pioneer of television news broadcasting? What was Edward R. Murrow like? He was very busy smoking and working and writing and not sociable, I mean, you know, to me. And after almost 65 years, yes, 65 years at work. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Ricky Johnson is a master at reading the room. Most of the time we talk. We, we talk about, you know, what movie did you see or have you been to the theater or, you know, how's the family? So we do chat. But sometimes Charlie will come in and I can tell from the look on his face that something's going on and I don't say anything give him a chance to work it out. Oh, I see. Makeup yeah, may right. in you fact mean, be mean, superficial, but its impact is deep. Richard Nixon's biggest mistake after Watergate? Probably his decision not to wear makeup in his presidential debate with John F. Kennedy, a decision which made him look sweaty and nervous. Makeup shows up in history books when it comes to that 1960 yes. election. Yes. Now, you made up Richard Nixon when? After he left office. I made him up twice, actually. He was very gracious and <laughs> certainly took makeup. <laughs> this time, <laughs> yeah. I'm accepting this time, makeup. Absolutely. Florence Riccobono began working in TV right around when TV began. An art school graduate and aspiring actress, Ricky, she got the nickname in college, got her start doing makeup on Sid Caesar's Your Show of Shows and The Milton Berle Show. <laughs> and a show like that was watched by millions of people. Yes. Yes. So did you think, okay, I've got to get this right because mm. about a third of the country is going to be watching no, this. No, I really never thought about yeah. it. It was my job. I did the best I knew how to do, but I never really thought about the historical significance of right. it. It was just like something you did. <laughs> and she liked doing it so much that even after marrying and having seven children, she kept on working. Yeah. Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali. And next to Bella Abzug? <laughs> right next to Marv Albert? She Albert's? happens to be an A. Ricky keeps track of all the newsmakers she's made over in a spiral notebook. I can just go anywhere randomly. I'm on M, and I put my finger down, and there's John McEnroe. Yeah. Right above Margaret Mead and <laughs> Margaret Gary. Margaret Mead, yeah, she was she was lovely. Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle, yeah. The monkeys, the McGuire sisters, all of them. Yeah. Dudley Moore. Dudley Did you, Moore. You he had was to use funny. a booster seat. <laughs> and then there are those four guys from England. You know, the ones who in 1964 played the Ed Sullivan Show, where Ricky worked at the time. I heard all this din outside, and I looked out the window and I saw all these young people. And I talked to the doorman. And he said, oh, some group uh, from England. I said, wow, this looks serious. So I called home and I said to my husband, I can get the children into a dress rehearsal. The children didn't want to come. So of course now they're very sorry about that. Ricky knew just what those pop-up starts needed to pop on TV during that now legendary broadcast. I used a little eyeliner and... Uh, and why did you use eyeliner? Because it was black and white television. They were a music group. You want to see their eyes and you want to see their mouth and that's what's, you know, important. I met Paul McCartney maybe eight years ago and I told him who I was and he said, oh, I used pancake makeup and eyeliner and when we asked you about the eyeliner, you said it'll be fine. <laughs> and it was. it was. Over the decades, Ricky has drawn close to more than a few of her colleagues here. 
friendships that mattered dearly after her husband Jay passed away in 1999. I was devastated. I, I, I thought maybe I shouldn't go back to work. I didn't know how I could. And Mike Wallace came to the funeral home and Mike took me by the hands and he looked me in the eyes and he said, you're coming back to work. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing. He said, you are coming back to work. And so he gave me courage, you know. I really can't do this with my glasses on, can I? No. <laughs> it wouldn't be right to end this tribute without pointing out that Ricky Johnson, the woman who's made thousands of other people look good, looks pretty damn great herself. Are you ever gonna retire? I don't know, Mo. I, I love what I do. I work with the top people in the industry and um, they still like what I would do. So should I just sit here and read a book? <laughs>